Why a DOF lens or enhanced monofocal lens can make you crazy after the surgery? Even if your surgeon promised you that you will be able to read, to do whatever you want without any issues, especially referring to other patients who have been implanted with the same lens and they have no complaints. What could be the reason? What, you can, what can be done to avoid this or what can be done to, let's say, to fix it after the surgery? And the most important, what you should do as a surgeon and as a patient before the surgery to avoid that bad case scenario. Hi there, my name is Oleksiy and you are at IWLAdvisor.com channel telling the truth about IWLs. Last week I'm giving a short lecture at the Ophthalmic Congress in Ukraine and um, that's why I decided to share with you my findings which I discovered while, whilst I was preparing for that Congress. And what I found, what I realized make me absolutely rethinking the way how we communicate with the patient and I believe I am obliged to share with you my findings especially if you are a doctor or if you are a patient and talking to a doctor please consider thinking about the visual outcomes you really need after the surgery so what is a core let's say core mistake I'm, I'm observing time to time not always but time to time we in in terms of communication surgeon to a patient about the lenses and what mistake patients are doing accepting this uh, let's say type of promises from the surgeon and honestly i don't want to say that someone is guilty in this because what i've discovered we never ever was thinking that way about visual performance after the surgery so what i'm talking about first of all let's define what is visual acuity Visual acuity, as all of you know, if you're an ophthalmologist or, and I believe that if you're a patient, you also more or less understand what is visual acuity. So visual acuity is a, your ability to distinguish the smallest objects at far, at intermediate and at near vision, near distance from your eyes. It means we have some kind of standard visual acuity, which is 2020 or 6x6 or 1.0 in decimal or 0.0 in logmar doesn't matter. So we have the smallest objects, uh, which we assume is a standard visual acuity, it's normal visual acuity for far, for intermediate and for near. And we have uh, decreased visual acuity, which caused by different eye diseases, refractive errors, myopia, hyperopia, etc. And what is important to understand that if a patient is young and healthy and have no visual issues, patient has a visual acuity of let's say normal range 2020 at far at intermediate and near due to accommodation mechanism at near at and at and at intermediate and of course because the patient doesn't have any refractive error for the far vision then when it comes to cataract surgery or refractive lens exchange to eliminate glasses especially if we are talking about presbyopic age when uh, people are getting older and um, needs for reading glasses is uh, raised out of nowhere for you to to be able to see something close you need to put on readers to see your watch to read something etc and uh, at that point you start to feel that you need more visual acuity at the near or at intermediate because your visual system your optical system of your eye is not uh, is not able to distinguish that small ob objects anymore because objects are blurry and you need more time to concentrate in order to either push your accommodation mechanism to focus on such an object or if you put a new lens uh, which is either EDOF or trifocal or we eliminate trifocal from that equation so I'm talking about EDOFs or uh, enhanced monofocal and these lenses uh, as any intraocular lenses are using so-called pseudo accommodation mechanism to somehow give you back the um, needed sharpness at such a distance and to bring you back ability to distinguish small object at near distance at about 40 centimeters from your eyes and you know what what we uh, what i've realized that theoretically we need about 0.4 logmar visual acuity up close at about 40 centimeters to read normal prints and uh, vast majority of uh, edof lenses well, it depends, of course, on the on the, and on the model, but more or less, patients are able to get this 
intermediate, uh, uh, sorry, near vision acuity, which is essential for the reading. The good point is that marketing is telling uh, that we have uh, so-called functional near vision. And um, if we are talking about um, intermediate vision, some companies have been claim claiming that we have even functional intermediate with basic monofocal eye wells like Alcon Clarion, for instance. And I'm, I was asking myself for years, what does it mean functional near vision and or functional reading or even functional intermediate? And here I want to um, uh, introduce you uh, a new terminology. It's not new. It's new to refractive lens exchange and to the cataract surgery, but it's well known from, I would say, 1993, if I'm not mistaken. If you're interested, I'll put to the description below an article about the term, uh, term which is called acuity reserve not um, accommodation reserve, it's just acuity reserve. Now this term used in low vision field of medicine when mm, we're trying to give a patients with uh, significant visual loss uh, caused by ocular uh, macular degeneration or retinal diseases to give the patient's ability to read. It's a separate field of uh, knowledge, but you know what, it's also applicable to the refractive lens exchange and to presbyopia correcting lenses. So what the principle lies in visual, in acuity reserve. The core idea is if someone is, if a patient, if, if a person is able to distinguish uh, something small as a maximum visual acuity, it means in that example 0 0.4 logmar to read. It means that if you will concentrate heavily and if you are talking about pseudo accommodation, you are not able to accommodate your lens, but you are able to, to give extra load to your cognitive, um, uh, how to say, to a cognitive uh, part of your brain to distinguish the letters. What does it mean? You are able to read something, but you need more time, you need more concentration, more time to understand or you have to move it uh, further from your eye, or you have, if you are trying to read something small or at 40 centimeters, you have to de dedicate more time to decode that a little bit blurry image. But, so it, it means it's possible. Same applies to intermediate vision with uh, basic monofocal. Vast majority of basic monofocals are giving you ability to read something at intermediate, but with the same cognitive load. You have to decode what is on your monitor, or you have to, let's say, decode or sink deeper. If you, for example, using a screwdriver to unscrew, some, unscrew something and to see where you exactly have to put that screwdriver. Driver. So, acuity reserve tells you if you are able to read functionally a small prints at near, it means you can read it with a cognitive overload, but to read it fluently, you need three times larger fonts or letter sizes or three times larger object size to make it quickly. And it means in terms of visual acuity, if we calculate it in logmar, it means it's at least three, better five, five rows of visual acuity more is needed to, uh, to let's say, jump from functional vision to, to jump to the comfortable vision. And now we're coming to this uh, question, why some patients with EDOF lenses are unhappy and became crazy after the surgery. The core topic here is uh, the comfort zone and comfort threshold. For someone, seeing something and dedicate some time to, to that, it might be okay because someone is able to, to read or doesn't need that much um, reading abilities at up close, but for some people, for some people it's not a good solution. So when a doctor is saying to you, you will be able to read, maybe with some extra using of glasses, some patients are not really understand what the difference between use of glasses or not. And what I've realized that some patients are thinking that if I will be able to read, so I'm reading it comfortably, but if I need smaller print, then I'm able to read. Okay, I'll put my glasses on, but I never use smaller, never read smaller prints, and I will be fine with basic prints. Again, the big mistake here is that standard prints means you are not able to read it fluently. And 
if we were talking about smaller prints without use of glasses, it means you won't be able to read it at all. If you compare it with Edof, set at a little bit of the focus shift at minus whatever, or if you compare Edof's with trifocal lens, trifocal lens or um, the full, full range of vision lenses are giving way better visual acuity at near, giving you ability to read smaller prints with a cognitive load, but uh, it gives you ability to read basic prints fluently and comfortably. So the core uh, problem, the core difference here uh, between functional near or functional intermediate, if we are talking about EDOF lenses, or we are talking about basic monofocals like Alcon Clarion, and they claim we need we give you a functional intermediate. And what I've realized that some patients and some doctors claiming that well we have a new Clarion giving us a good intermediate vision, you can use it. It's not good, it's functional, so it's possible to use your vision, but it's not point of comfort. So acuity reserve from low vision field of uh, ophthalmology, absolutely apl applicable to the cataract and refractive lens exchange, explaining you what is the, uh, let's say, threshold and what is the difference between functional and comfort vision. It means three times larger ob objects, or at least three to five lines extra of visual acuity. So my take home message for you, if you're an ophthalmologist or you are a patient, when you will be discussing with your ophthalmologist your near and intermediate visual needs, and if you will be offered kind of functional here at, an, at near or functional at intermediate, ask your doctor twice, or if you're a doctor, ask your patient twice. How do you expect user vision at that particular distances. Moreover, uh, when we measure visual acuity at any distance, we always use the highest possible level of light environment. So it, it's contrast, it's uh, bright light. It means that if uh, lightning conditions will be below the optimal or contrast will be lower, your comfort zone even will be worse. It's normal, it's physics. Please note, I'm not saying you that EDOF lenses or enhanced monofocal lenses are a bad choice. Absolutely not. Every patient has absolutely different visual needs, visual values, life values, and uh, different perception of vision at different distances. So it means I'm not saying again that trifocal is better than um, EDOF lenses or enhanced monofocals are worse than trifocals, absolutely not. Again, every lens fits the best specific use scenario for every patient. And the core point here is to understand type of visual acuity use for particular patient. So how quickly, how comfortably patient is expecting to use a vision. And it's always about compromise. We're not able to, to use uh, trifocal without any side effects in night vision. And we are not able to use EDOF without any side effects and uh, either close distance or far distance if you want to increase the close distance. Unfortunately, that's physics, that's life, and we are not getting younger with age. But the good point, we have a brilliant technologies which, has, uh, which are able to bring you back some functional vision, some visual functions to enjoy your life. And the most important, the most important take-home message for, um, I, I guess, the surgeons, you know, when you explain to your patient an IOL, keep in mind that a patient never buys a lens from you. Patients are buying life, life experience. I'm not talking about life quality. I'm just talking about the perceived life conditions for every patient. So offering to the patient an IOL, even if you have experience with other patients who said, I'm fine reading this with that type of lens. Ask twice your patient, are, uh, how do you perceive the type of reading? Are you expecting to read it quickly? Are you expect to read smaller prints or whatever? Well, to make things clear and short, read about acuity reserve, apply to your visual experience and help your patient to see better if you're a surgeon. And if you are a patient, ask twice your surgeon, what does it mean other people was able to read? and apply to yourself. It's a difference between function and a comfort zone.